If there are people who want me to summarize the lore of certain games, feel free to tell me in the comments. But anyway, those of you who know me know that I am a specialist when it comes to dabbling in the lore of video games that have no lore. I was covering League of Legends back when Riot themselves had no idea what Yordles were. You may call me a madman, but I enjoy digging deep lore out of seemingly barren places. That's why when I finally had a look at Apex Legends, I noticed how shockingly close the lore of Apex is to the original Journals of Justice from League of Legends. So of course I had to give Apex a go, and I decided to explain its story for those of you who might be interested in it, and for those of you who are too lazy to read it. Just a little bit of a warning for those of you who randomly found this channel. Even though this video is about Apex, I will talk about League of Legends at the beginning, but don't worry, it will make sense at the end. So let's get on it. Apex Legends is a battle royale game, and as such it really has no way to realistically progress its story. It is in the exact same spot as MOBAs were when they blew up. MOBAs also try to make their players more invested in the game through expanding its story, but both Dota and League of Legends realize that it is a nearly impossible task. It is really difficult to push the story of a game that has no connection to the game itself. In other words, no matter what you do on the Summoner's Rift or a Battle Royale arena, your actions will never be canon to the story, since every game is different. In its early years, League of Legends managed to fix this conundrum. Riot Games figured out that if they give their characters a reason to repeatedly fight in the arena, they can make the fights part of their world. So Riot turned League of Legends into an organization that threw criminals and champions that represented their nation into an arena to fight for the glory of whatever they fought for. It sounds complicated, but it is pretty simple. Instead of having multiple wars raging across the world, the nations at war would throw five of their champions into an arena and whoever wins the fight wins the war. Therefore, no actual wars between nations were possible. All differences would quickly end in the arena. The problem was that League of Legends was led by the summoners, aka the players. The summoners were all powerful mages that would summon the champions into the arena, which means that the summoners had to be more powerful than any champion they would summon. They had to control them in the battle after all. So in the end, the summoners had to be more powerful than even creatures that consumed entire planets. And when you have a mage this powerful, you can't have a villain in your world. No matter how evil someone would be, the summoners would always easily get rid of them. This led into the lack of plot twists in the story. And in the end, Riot had to rewrite their entire lore. Now, how is this related to Apex Legends? See, Apex is essentially doing the exact same thing. Their battle royale arena is there to settle the champion's problems. But Apex doesn't have summoners. They don't have a superior overlord that keeps all evil in check. So their story can work. So now finally, what is the story of Apex Legends all about? The Apex story is part of the Titanfall universe. That's why when you started the game for the first time, you might have recognized the logo in the tutorial. The factions you'll see in this game are exactly the same factions you saw in Titanfall. Yeah, you earned this, eh? This. Yes, Apex is the mercenary organization. The story of Apex Legends takes place about 30 to 40 years after the Titanfall conflict ended. We know this because in the opening scene of Apex Legends you may have noticed Blisk, the mercenary antagonist of the previous Titanfall games. You may also know their conflict as the Frontier War that involved two sides. The IMC, the Interstellar Manufacturing Corporation, responsible for creating military-grade weapons, including Titans. And on the other side you had the militia that was trying to fight them back. The reason why it was called the Frontier War was because the Frontier was what they called the region of space where the war took place. And just like it is with any other war, the main objective was to gain more power. In Titanfall 2 we learned about a planet called Typhon. It held powerful resources and it triggered some quantum shenanigans. Therefore it was a source of power. But those of you who played Titanfall 2 know what happens to it at the end. Eventually the war was over and both the IMC and the militia retreated from the frontier. But as they left, they took all the resources with them. So now the frontier worlds were left barren and people had to leave to find new homes. One possible location where these people could find a new home were the Outlands. They were untouched by war and they were full of resources and opportunities. But there was a reason why people called these planets the Outlands. Life was cheap here and danger lurked around every corner. A popular place for pioneers, explorers and outlaws. All of them used to backstab each other to climb the power ladder. But now they settled their differences in the Apex games instead. A blood sport where legends from all corners of the frontier compete for money, fame and glory. That is the base of the Apex and Titanfall universe. Now let's have a look at the legends that actually compete in this sport. The first one is Bangalore, a professional soldier. Just like her entire family, Bangalore served in the IMC armed forces. She was an exceptional cadet in the IMC military academy. 
One of her special traits was to take apart a Peacekeeper shotgun, tweak its power and put it back together in under 20 seconds, while blindfolded. Three years ago, Bangalore and her brother Jackson were on a mission to retrieve a mercenary fleet from the Outlands. It was to aid the IMC in their battle against the militia. But upon arrival, they lost contact with the IMC headquarters and they were ambushed. Jackson stayed behind to give the rest of their squads time to escape. This left Bangalore alone in the Outlands. She now fights in the Apex games to raise enough money to buy herself a ride home. Back to the IMC base where the rest of her family is. Two lore facts. Bangalore's real name is Anita. And you may notice that she has a legendary skin that reflects her military past. The second legend is Bloodhound. Now I'm gonna call Bloodhound him. But keep in mind that we don't actually know his gender. And we are on the internet so people get offended far too quickly. Anyway, Bloodhound is a legendary hunter known across the Outlands. Bloodhound's identity is unknown. And he is surrounded in nothing but rumors. One of which is that he is a half bat. Take that for what it is. A rumor. Bloodhound is in the Apex game seemingly for glory. He believes in Norse gods that were worshipped back on Earth. This explains why his companion is a raven. The Allfather, which he often refers to, is Odin himself. The cool twist in his story is that according to the Norse mythology, everyone's fates were already decided, and Bloodhound knows what his own death will look like. So until that prophecy is fulfilled, he knows he can't be stopped. Next up we have Caustic. His real name is Alexander Knox. He was a scientist working at Humbert Labs, the frontier's leading manufacturer of pesticide gases. During the frontier war, reliable farmlands were quite rare, so the frontier colonies were always looking for better and stronger formulas. Alexander was the brightest of the scientists, and he was the one who usually revolutionized the gases. But eventually, in order to make a formula that would truly protect crops against any parasite, he needed to test it on something living. So in secret, he tested his work on his co-workers. This ignited a wave of madness in his mind. Suddenly, Alexander saw his work more like art. He reveled in the destruction he could cause. In time, the head of Humbert Labs found out about his experiments. But when the two met face to face, the Humbert Lab ended up in flames with the head of the labs dead. Alexander Knox is now considered missing and dead. But in reality, he only joined the Apex games under his new name, Caustic, to continue his experiments on living beings. Next up we have Gibraltar, whose real name is Makoa. Both of his parents were volunteers in the search and rescue associations. An association that has its own gun in the game. So they were something like space lifeguards. But Makua didn't value their work until his boyfriend stole his father's motorbike. And together they got trapped in a deadly mudslide. Their parents rescued them both. But Makua's father lost his arm in the process. This pushed him into devoting his life to helping others. Just like his parents did. The reason why he joined the Apex Games wasn't because of personal gains. His friends often joined the games for extra cash, but most of them never returned. Gibraltar simply joined the Apex Games to keep his friends safe. Next there is Lifeline, also known as AJ Chi. Her parents were quite wealthy, they profited off of the frontier wars, which meant that Lifeline's family was responsible for a lot of damage done to the colonies. Lifeline immediately left her home when she learned about her family's real business, and she decided to join the Frontier Corps, an organization that helped the frontier communities. She joined the Apex games to raise money to help the communities even more. Although people usually die in the games, which is exactly what Lifeline is against. But she realizes that people signed up for this themselves. All of them knew the risk. So in the end, her victories mean more help for the frontiers. Then we have Mirage, or Mirage depending on where you're from. Also known as Elliot Witt. He's the youngest of four brothers who got used to fooling around to get attention. He and his mother got very close as they worked on the Holopilot technology. Something you may remember from the Titanfall games. But over the years, all of his brothers eventually went MIA during the frontier war. Elliot himself worked as a bartender, so he always heard about the glory and fame that came from the Apex games. But he didn't join because he didn't want to risk leaving his mother childless, until she gave him a custom set of holo devices and told him to follow his dreams. So now he is in the game for the sake of fame and money. Next up we have Pathfinder. His story is relatively simple. Decades ago he was booted up in an abandoned laboratory, with no idea who created him or why. He only knows that his identification is MRVN. That is his real name. It's the only hint that can help him find his creator. That's why he joined the Apex Games. He's there to gain a following to draw the attention of his creator. And lastly we have Wraith. We don't know her real name, or why she has the power to open rifts. All we know is that one day she woke up in an IMC asylum, with no memory of her previous life. 
she heard voices in her head that wouldn't let her sleep. They nearly drove her insane before she decided to listen to them and trust them. With the aid of these voices, Wraith managed to control her void manipulating powers and she escaped the facility. She's now on a quest to find out the truth about her past. The problem is that most of the other facilities are buried beneath the Apex Games arenas. So she is there to find more information with every game. And just like Bangalore, Wraith also has a legendary skin that reflects her story. But with that, that is pretty much the base story of Apex. From what I've heard, Respawn plans to release seasons similar to Fortnite, so they might use them to release more story. So if you find this video in the future, keep in mind that there is probably more lore to explore.